If you're in a deregulated part of Texas, let's go ahead and take a look at what that process looks like of selecting a specific retail energy provider if you're planning on going solar or if you've already gone solar so that I could use that as an example to help break down what solar actually does and what it could look like in your monthly bill. To start off with, I always advise that customers go to texaspowerguide.com. It's a fantastic website. It has several, but not all, of the solar buyback plans that are currently available by all of the retail energy providers, at least the main ones all across Texas. You could see here that for these plans, they give you two options, whether or not you're in Encore, which is the Dallas-Fort Worth area, or if you're in Houston, which is the center point um, utility or, or the greater Houston area. There's also AEP and some other deregulated areas. Those are not shown in this guide, but this is super helpful. Now, I did a video on this a while back, but uh, things have changed dramatically uh, since we've uh, been seeing some uh, increases and changes uh, to the energy market. Uh, but what I like about this table is this is updated very frequently. Uh, this was last updated on the first. When I started scripting this video, I had already gone through and done some of the math for some of these programs and then once I got to shooting the video the cost had already dramatically changed and the prices for the programs and the program options had already changed. But here you could see the different retailers that are available as well as the different plans. These all have hyperlinks to them so you can go right to the plan. Here are the term limits whether or not it's a 12 month, 36 month term, 24 month term. You, you can see all those different options here as well as the early termination fees. What would it cost you to end that program early? Uh, some of these it's a base charge, others it's by month, whatever you have remaining in, in your term. Um, and then you see the base monthly charge. This is what we talked about here, where those are those base charges that the retail energy provider actually charges you every single month. And that's not necessarily gonna go up or go down with the price of, of energy. That's just that fixed cost that will only change once your plan retires or if you decide to cancel that plan and sign up for another one, there could be some changes there. Now we have the import costs. This is the cost that you pay. These are the charges that you pay for pulling kilowatt hours off the grid but you also have the export cost. So this is your buyback, your net metering program. This will uh, hopefully offset those import costs if you select the right plan. The difference that we're seeing now versus when I first filmed this video last year where we started to, to talk about the, the price of power and these different plan options is all of these different plans started tacking on that TDU charge. So that TDU charge again is that transmission distribution utility charge. So now even if you were to go with let's say Pulse as an example, their 12 month program, you can see their base charge of 495. Uh, they have a 13.4 cent uh, price per kilowatt for the import. And then they also give you a one-to-one, -one, which is at 13.4 cents that they pay you back for the export. But on the import, you see it's plus TDU charge, which means every kilowatt hour that you pull off of the grid, they're not only gonna charge you 13.4 cents, but they're also going to charge you an additional TDU charge on top of that. And then when they purchase that excess power from you, they're only going to give you that 13.4 cents. They will not credit you that TDU charge. Well, what is that TDU charge? Uh, here, it's that transmission distribution utility charge for Encore, which right now they have their base monthly charge. Again, that's that base TDU charge that you're gonna see every single month. But they also have that TDU per kilowatt hour charge, which right now is just shy of four cents. So it's no longer a true one-to-one -one if you are signing up for a program where it looks like it's one-to-one, 13.4 cents, plus they pay you 13.4 cents, but now you need to factor in that you will also be paying for those TDU charges. Now, if you're a solar customer and you're producing during the day, you're also consuming during the day, but if a lot of your consumption happens at night, then you're going to be incurring those TDU charges, even though you may be getting some buybacks or some credits on your base price per kilowatt hour. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what this looks like as an example. So in this example, we're going to assume that we are on the Pulse 12 month plan. We're going to assume that we um, consumed 1000 kilowatt hours this last billing cycle, but that we produce through our solar 1200 kilowatt hours during that same billing cycle. So what does this look like? 
even if I'm without solar, we could still run this model and it will look very similar. So we see our base charge, which is for our pulse plan. Again, this is just an example of that $4.95. We should see that in our bill. Then we're gonna see that TDU charge, which is that base Encore charge, which is at $3.42. That will be a standard line item in our bill as well. Then we have the TDU charge associated with the consumption, with the kilowatt hour consumption. Now, in this case, with Encore, it's that just under four cents per kilowatt that they're charging, which means it's not just 1,000 kilowatt hours that you're gonna be charged for your retail energy provider, but it's also gonna be that additional TDU charge. So to do that math, it's pretty simple. We know that we're gonna be charged that four cents per kilowatt hour that we consume off the grid. So it's just 1,000 kilowatt hours times that near four cents, and you're looking at about $35. So $35 is gonna be what you see for your TDU uh, charge on your bill. Then you have the retail energy provider consumption charge itself, which that's the standard rate that you're gonna be paying for that power. So in this example, you used a thousand kilowatt hours and on the Pulse 12 month plan that we just signed up for, it's now just north of 13 cents. So when you do that math, it comes out to about $134 that you're going to see as a charge on your bill for that retail energy provider under this Pulse plan. So if you add all of those charges up, you're looking at a whopping $178, which is going to include your base charges, your TDU charges, as well as your price per kilowatt hour from your energy retail pro, uh, program provider. Now let's take a look at what that would be if you decided to go solar. So with solar, now you're generating and you're producing, but in this example, we're gonna assume that we're producing 1200 kilowatt hours per month, which is an extra 200 kilowatts than what we consumed that much, which means that we have a little bit extra to apply back towards this uh, entire math equation here. So with my kilowatt hour solar production offset, we're just taking that same 1000 kilowatt hours and we're applying the, the 13 cents that we see was offered to us through this Pulse plan for the export buyback, which gives us $134, which means that we're able to offset through that buyback plan at least $134 of our uh, kilowatt hour price and, and our consumption versus our generation. Now we have an additional 200 kilowatts as well, because again, we're assuming we consumed 1,000, but we produced 1,200. So now they're gonna buy back that extra kilowatt hour production that we had at that same rate, which in this example gives us an extra now $26 that we could apply back towards our bill. So that is a total savings of about $160 because we're not just saving on our production to offset our consumption, but we're also overproducing. So you can imagine what this equation looks like if you're underproducing. If you're producing only 900 kilowatt hours, but you use 1,000, you're gonna have to buy that extra 100 to make up the difference from the grid and you will definitely have a bill, but you'll have some net cred uh, crediting that applies to help offset the other kilowatt hours that you were able to produce uh, that helped at least at a minimum offset some of your bill. But if we have an overproduction, then that's actually a good value for us. Now, what does that actually look like when we apply the base charges in the bill and all of our net crediting? Well, then your monthly bill charges then become the $178, which is what it is fully loaded with those base charges and those uh, TDU charges. But then we're going to minus the $160 that we net gained from our overproduction as well as our production through our solar generation. That still leaves me in this instance with a $17 bill simply because I didn't produce enough to offset all of my bill. Now, if you want to produce enough to offset uh, your entire bill, um, really it could just be based on the time of year. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to add solar panels or anything like that because in the summer months we get way more sun and depending upon what our consumption level is and how big our system is, you should be producing quite a bit of power during that time. But over the winter time when the sun isn't out as much or when we have a lot of cloudy skies or some rain, then 
you could be looking at much lower production levels and much more that you'll have to purchase off of the grid. All right, folks, thanks so much for checking us out. I know that that's a lot of information to take in. I was able to only do one example. There are many, many more examples that are out there depending upon the utility that you're with, but the rules and the math still apply. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about what your bill entails and why those different prices change and what are those price drivers and what are some of the things that you could do about it going solar to help offset some of that. So again, please drop a comment below, uh, reach out to us, give us a call, uh, engage with us. We're here to help. We're here to provide guidance. We're here to provide consulting, whatever it is that you need. Uh, we're here to provide opportunities for you to get energy independence by going solar and adding backup power like a generator or a battery. So thank you so much for tuning in and God bless.